Hi there, Simon Stokes here, and in this video we're going to take a look at equalization. So this is a really important part of music production, and you'll find that um, when you know how to EQ your sounds correctly, you can really bring them alive, you can make your whole track sound so much better than it was before. So in this video we're going to go through the two different EQs that we've got in Ableton Live, um, and then in the next video we're going to take a look at going through and EQing all of the parts individually in my track um, to try and make them sound a little bit better. So first of all, just as a quick recap, we've got the spectrum. So if you remember about how spectrum works, when I'm playing my track, you can see all the frequencies that go into making up the track on the way there. So we've got uh, our low frequencies down at the bottom. So you can see the kick drum bouncing through here at my bass line. Then we've got our mid-range frequencies here, which includes a lot of the percussion, my claps, things like that. And then up on the top right hand side, we've got our top end percussion. So things like hi-hats, the tambourine, and that's all taking place up there. So when we're working with uh, filters, if you remember before, when we've got a filter before the spectrum here, remember it's got to go before so you can see the effects of it because it's the effects flow left to right. A filter is a really extreme way of attenuating or boosting frequency. So you can see that it's, it's very extreme because it rolls off all of the frequencies above a particular point. What an equalizer does um, is just is a bit more gentle than that. Now, if you've ever DJed before, you'll be quite familiar with equalizers. Um, you've, if you've ever seen a DJ mixer, such as the Allen and Heath Zone 92, you will see that there is uh, an EQ section on it, and you've got normally on most mixers you have bass, mid, and treble. So that's obviously for working with your low frequencies, your mid range, and your top end frequencies. Um, on the on some mixers like the Zone 92, you've got four. So you've got your bass, you've got lower mids. So this region here, then upper mids, and then your treble on top of that, which gives you just a little bit more control over things. Um, but yeah, if you've not DJed before, you will have seen EQs all over the place, even if you've played with a car stereo you'll notice that you've normally got a bass and treble control on that um, and old hi-fis used to have really nice graphic equalizers or good hi-fis still have them graphic equalizers where you could really dial in the kind of um, the EQ settings that you wanted for your music so in live as I said we've got two EQs first of all let's take a little look at EQ3 I'm going to bring that and put that before the spectrum just now so EQ3 is quite a basic little equalizer. Um, I've got it on the master track just now, just so you can hear um, how it sounds. Now we've got three controls on it. A low control, where obviously we can attenuate our bass frequencies. And you can see that this rolls right off to the point of being like a high pass filter as well. We can also boost them a bit, if you wanted to. We've got a mid-range uh, knob where we can turn up or down our mid-range frequencies. And we've got a high knob where we can turn up and down our high frequencies. This equalizer is really designed more for DJ use. I don't really go into it that much um, in the courses because it's not really designed for music production as such. It's more like a live performance equalizer. It's very similar to what you would get on a DJ mixer, which is very rudimentary in terms of equalizers. So we've got uh, underneath each knob, you've also got a kill switch, which is kind of a performance thing as well. So say for example, you click on the low one, it's gonna kill all the bass to your project, and then you can slam it back in. Which can be quite nice, it's a sort of DJ style EQ. Um, but yeah, and be below that we've got another two controls which just set the sort of cutoff point between these two EQs. So you can see that the this is saying that the low frequency knob is ranging from zero hertz, so right down at the bottom, right up to 173 hertz. So on our uh, spectrum that is about here, 173. Um, so that's right there, and then you know, you could change that. So if we bring the low knob down, you notice this will, now it's just rolling off from a bit lower, from about 83 hertz. If I set it higher, it's gonna roll off higher. Um, so yeah, but it's quite a basic EQ. It's not one that you use very often in uh, music production, really. Um, what really is the daddy for this is the EQ8. I'll bring that on just now. So EQ8, you can see is really nice, first of all, because it's got a spectrum display in the back of it. 
So you can see very similar to on spectrum, you can see all the frequencies that are going in, that are running through your EQ, which makes means it makes it much, much easier to get in and make tweaks and changes to it. Um, so you can see by default, we've got four points on this EQ um, and each one you can kind of move up and down and really dial it in. So it means you can say, okay, so these frequencies where the clap is, you can kind of see the clap popping up there. I could bring them up a bit, or I could bring them down a bit. So it's kind of very simple in a way, because you say if you want a bit more top end in your track, you could grab the right one. If you wanted more bass, you could grab the left one. And you can see here that these four points are actually represented down at the bottom. So you can see that there are four points currently enabled on this. This is called a paragraphic EQ. Um, and you can see that we've got point one, point two, point three, and point four. We can also turn on five, six, seven, and eight if we want some more. Um, I'm just gonna keep it as uh, one to four at the moment. But we, that's why it's called EQ8 because we've got up to eight points that we can use to shape the sound in this. So if I take, uh, if, if, if you click on each one, you'll notice that each point has got a different EQ type here. Um, so at the moment, point one is what's called a shelving EQ, and that's what this is here. And you can see that when I bring point one up or down, it actually adds a little shelf onto the left-hand side, which either boosts or attenuates frequencies. So you can see that I can, you can either give a sort of global boost to your bass or a global cut to your bass using a shelving EQ like that. So you can see that on point four is also set to a shelving EQ. So when I bring that up and down, it's gonna quite globally boost or cut all frequencies in that region. So that's a shelving EQ. That's what these are set up as by default. You don't have to keep them as that. There are various other EQs in there. So you'll see that point two and three at the moment are set to a bell EQ. So you see how they've, that they're both set to this one here. And when I bring it up, you get this kind of bell shape and this is probably the most common type of EQ that you're going to use in music production, really. This lets you choose particular frequencies. For example, there's my kick. Or my hats. You've got to remember, this is on the master track at the moment, so it's quite um, it's quite broad at the moment. It's kind of being applied to everything at once. We're going to go through and apply it to individual sounds soon. But yeah, so an, a bell EQ... Oops, that's the wrong one. Bell EQ gives you this kind of point that you can drag up or down and you'll notice that for each of these points we've got a series of controls on the left hand side by choosing different points you'll see these controls change to represent each point so the top control is our frequency which is just the same as moving that point left and right on the spectrum there so you're just choosing this the, the frequency that you're actually affecting the second knob is the gain knob which lets you turn a point up or down which is exactly the same as just dragging it up or down here and the bottom knob is called your Q, which is similar to resonance in a filter, but you can see what Q does in an EQ is makes this look really nice and tight. So you can see that when, you, when you've got the Q up high, you're focusing on very specifically on one frequency here. Um, if you have the Q down low, then you've got a very broad kind of frequency range on there. So yeah, quite a nice wee, uh, way of working. It's very simply laid out EQ8, but it actually is very, very powerful. And you'll notice that if you click on the, the point here, you can actually change uh, the EQ type for each one of these. Now, you should recognize some of these, the top two and the bottom two, as filters. So you can see that the top one is a high-pass filter. And you can see it's got a very steep slope, which means it's rolling off frequencies very, very quickly after that cutoff point there. If you, the next one down is a high pass filter as well. It's a little bit more gentle on the slope. Sometimes uh, th this th sort of more gentle slope like this can sound a little bit more musical and a little bit more friendly. Whereas this, this type here is more for really ruthlessly chopping off frequencies which are causing problems. Um, and we're gonna look at that in just a sec um, in the next video. But for now, we've got those two there at the bottom. We've now got a low pass filter and a sharp low pass filter as well. So we know those two, those four already really. Um, and that's what's one of the really nice things about EQA is that it, also gonna, it can also act as a filter. 
So a filter is just a kind of extreme EQ, if you think about it. An EQ is just giving you very subtle boosts or cuts to frequencies, uh, but a filter is letting you really drastically roll off all frequencies at a particular point. So yeah, we've got those two. We've seen a shelving EQ, we've seen a bell EQ, and this last one here is called a notch EQ, um, which lets you notch out a particular frequency. So you can hear there. If you remember on auto filter, we also had a notch. Now, a notch EQ can be really useful in uh, mastering if you're wanting to, uh, you know, focus in on a particular frequency and get rid of it. Um, this is very extreme to be notching like this. Um, you can see that it's very kind of, uh, it's literally taking out a whole frequency. You don't use that that often in an EQ8. Um, but yeah, it's it's just it's good to know that it's there. What you will be using primarily are the probably shelving EQs uh, for the high end and low end, and then a bell EQ for the kind of, for anything else. Um, I tend to use bell EQs a lot on sounds. So what do we use EQs for then? Basically, you use them for a variety of reasons. We want to make sounds fit together by giving them a particular place on the frequency spectrum. Say, for example, a hi-hat. We don't want a hi-hat really to have any bass in it, so we would use an EQ to take off some of the bass and leave just the nice frequencies. You can use an EQ to accentuate the nice parts of a sound as well to make it just sound a little better, um, and we're going to look at that in the next video. Um, and you can also use it for removing all sorts of unwanted and problem frequencies as well. Um, so we'll take a look at those as we go along just now. Get familiar with EQ8, have a play around, and then move on to the next video.